Hello everybody and welcome to a new video. Aina 4.0 was finally released last weekend and some of you might already try it, but some of you might be unsure how to update properly or if they should uh, update already. So in this video, I want to clarify a few things, how to update your Aina version depending on where you come from, like in release candidate, Aina 3.0 or e an even older version. And I want to explain you three different ways how to update depending on how um, happy you were with your previous configuration or your previous flight behavior. Without further ado, enjoy the video. Before we start with the actual update, uh, I recommend you strongly to check out the release notes for Aina 4.0. You can find them here on GitHub in the raw version where there are links for all the pull requests and you get a glimpse of uh, what was changed since INA 3.0 and also some descriptions about uh, all the changes that were made. On the group.com website, uh, Darren Lyons also made a great article with all the important changes. Most of them uh, are covered for the fixed wing configurations and he describes very detailed what the different changes do and uh, what the new features and modes are for. Now let's start with the update and for that we open the configurator. As you can see here, this is configurator version 4.0 and the COM6 is or the COM port is already available as the craft is connected. So we first connect to the INAV configuration to check a few things beforehand. As you can see, the flight controller firmware here is 3.0.1. And the first thing we do is we go into the command line interface down here. We clear the output and then in the command line, we type the dump command to get a full configuration uh, readout of INAV. So we can make a backup. In this case, I use the command dump all. This is important if you have multiple PIT profiles or multiple battery profiles. The normal dump command would only show you the active profile. As you can see here, profile two is active for the battery. And the dump all shows you all profiles that are stored, even those that are not active. This takes just a few seconds. And after that, we see the complete configuration listed here. After this is done, we click on save to file and then we just take a place where we can save our complete dump backup just to have a backup in case we need to go back or something goes wrong. So we have all the configuration parameter parameters saved as they are. So I just changed the name here to 301 that, that I know what INAV version it is and the craft name is already included. After that, we clear the output history again and then we use the diff all command. That's basically the same. The only difference is that in this case, we only get values shown that are changed from the firmware defaults. It has nothing to do with the uh, airplane or uh, copter defaults, but the firmware defaults itself. So this list is much shorter and we only see values that are actually changed during the configuration over time uh, on, this, uh, on this aircraft. After this is done, we click down here on copy to clipboard and then we open any text editor uh, of your choice and I use notepad plus plus and we paste the diff here for later use. And I will show you what we do with that exactly. After that, just click on a different tab in the configurator. So we force the flag controller to reboot. And after that is done, just a quick connect to, to see if everything is fine, if the flag controller is ready and booted up. This is all okay, so we can disconnect again. And then we go to the firmware flasher. Here's one new feature of the new configurator 4.0. You have now a search feed here where you can look for what target uh, you want to look or you want to update. So you don't have to go through the whole list. And we can check in the diff here uh, in this line what exact target we have. In this case, it's a little bit confusing because uh, the Matic F411, S5, S6, Soft Serial 2 is a special target from Matic itself. It's not in the official INAV release. And you will see that here later. And then that, that confused me also a little bit because it was a long time ago when I flashed that board the last time. So in this case, alternatively, I use the 
ähm, F411 Soft Serial 2 on Channel 6 or the F Uh, full duplex soft serial um, firmware. In this case, the INAF official full duplex uh, soft serial uses the LED pad as a RX pad for soft serial 1, while the firmware from Matec uses server output 5 and 6 as a full duplex second soft serial. So that's the difference. I had to flash that back later, but here during the video recording, um, I didn't recognize that first. And that will also cause some error messages when we replay the backup of the LED configuration, but nothing, nothing to worry about. So after we have our target, uh, usually the exact same one as in the diff file, we select the firmware 4.0.0 and then we click flash firmware. If the board does not go correctly into DFU mode or the DFU mode is not shown on your PC, that can sometimes happen on Windows PCs. Then you can either use the Zedic tool to install the correct driver or even easier you can use the DFU driver fixer and I will link that in the video description just in case it's needed. If you need to use that then you just run the driver fixer, wait until it's finished, then you reconnect the board again and then you just click again on flash firmware and everything should be fine. After the flash progress is complete, we now can connect the first time to our new INAF 4.0 board. In this case, you will get the default configuration pop-up uh, on the first connection. And in this case, it doesn't really matter what we uh, select unless you want to have a completely clean setup and want to start from scratch. If we um, play back a configuration from an older version, it doesn't really matter what you select here, but it's always best to select the configuration you want. In this case, it's an AR Wing 900, so we select airplane without a tail. And this is also new that the inputs are now locked because in the INAF 3.0, it, it was possible to switch pages and abort the configuration storing process. So now this is blocked until the flight controller has saved the config and has rebooted. As you can see, we can now normally configure our, uh, our aircraft and we have a complete clean setup. So now the com now the decision starts. Uh, what do we want to uh, play back from the old configuration? If you are completely happy with your old configuration, your tune is perfect, it, the plane just flies perfect as exactly as you want, you can just copy the whole diff over to INA 4.0 if you come from INA 3.0, of course. If you are for on an older version or if you are not completely happy with how the plane flies, you should reduce the uh, amount of data you copy back and uh, especially the tuning profile and then start from scratch. So I will show you the different ways right now. In this case, I copy back the whole diff configuration. As you uh, can see, there are already some errors. In this case, uh, the save command is not executed automatically. And if I scroll up here, there's for example, the set deboost factor, that value doesn't exist in 4.0 anymore. So we can ignore that if there's invalid name or so. And a little bit up, we have these LED configuration errors. This is just because I have a different target right now that has no LED support. And uh, at the first line on the screen right now, you see that the soft serial configuration is not correct at this point because this target only has one soft serial and the second one cannot be configured, of course. So these are the only errors we get. If you have the same target, uh, you only should get the single error that was shown a little bit earlier. Okay, this was just to show you how it looks when you uh, load back a complete diff configuration of an INAF version like 3.0 or maybe a release candidate. But in this case, uh, if you are from an older INAF version or if you are not really happy with uh, how the craft flies or how the plane flies, I really recommend you to not copy the full diff and keep the tuning part out and just auto-tune from scratch with INAF 4.0. The reason for that is that some of the default PID values have changed and with the default PIDs and an auto-tune feed forward and rates, 
the tuning should be much better than it was on INA 3.0. So what we do here, we look in the diff for the profile section. In this case, there's only one pit profile and we completely remove this part from the diff file. Then we can also look over the other configuration things. In theory, you can uh, remove a lot of these things too, if you don't want them. You can look them up on the uh, GitHub page um, from INAV, what every configuration parameter does. The important things you should really keep are in the master section, the accelerometer uh, zero and accelerometer gain values. This is your accelerometer calibration. And then everything above master, like the OSD setup, your adjustment ranges, your modes, and um, yeah, other configurations that are specific to your setup and your controls. This also includes the serial port configuration and of course the feature set. And from the master section, if you don't really know what every value means, then of course you can take over everything. But uh, if you know uh, what the values mean, you can look them up on GitHub too. Um, it's better to transfer less of the stuff. So let's just paste everything except the tuning parameters. And you see the same errors as before, but that's not a problem. And as soon as that is finished, then we can uh, just type in the save command manually. And then the flight controller will save everything and reboot. Now there's one catch that's a little bit tricky because as soon as you start to apply the diff configuration, the configuration is first wiped. So it doesn't matter what you have selected first on the configuration profile. And then we do not load back the tuning. So you see now we have here the firmware defaults like the 200 degree roll and pitch rate and the default firmware pits. These are not the default pits for FPV planes or for fixed rings or for multi-rotor you select. So what we have to do now is set applied defaults is uh, equals zero in the CLI. Then we type save again to uh, reset this value. And what that does is on the next connect, INAV will tell the configurator that this is a fresh uh, configured board with no configuration on it at all, but it will not delete your configuration. It will ju just trick the configurator to show this um, default value uh, preset pop up again. And then again, we, we select airplane without a tail here. So now we get the correct default pit tune. This is very important. If you forget that step, uh, you will launch the next time with the firmware defaults and they are absolutely crap for fixed strings and unusable. So after that, we now have the new INA 4.0 default configuration and the default tune on it. And beside that, if you check all the other settings of the configurator, you can see in outputs, everything is there. The trimming, uh, the software trim is still there. The port configuration, everything is there as it was in the previous INAV version. It's just the tuning that is reset to the new 4.0 defaults. And from there, you can just launch the plane, do a new auto tune and yeah, look what INAV 4.0 can do with your plane. So I hope you found this video helpful. If yes, then please leave a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel. As always, if there are any questions, put them in the comments and this will help me to keep up the work. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.